Hello everyone and welcome to Peach State Pigskin. I am Blaine Gilmer here with head coach of the Creekview Grizzlies, Mr. Trevor Williams. Coach Williams, thank you so much for joining us. This is episode two. Uh, your good buddy John Ford said that you got to bring the juice tonight after uh, after following him in the episode one uh, last night. But we appreciate you coming on to talk a little Creekview football here with us. Blaine, I appreciate it, man. And those are those are uh, that's big shoes to fill and, and a big follow there with with Coach Ford. He did a great job. Uh, we'll see if we can't uh, meet or, or exceed uh, what you guys were able to do with episode one. Absolutely, absolutely. So uh, we're we're gonna be for those that don't know when when you watch this, uh, and Coach is gonna make sure we get it shared to like in Creek Views, Facebook, all that kind of stuff uh, eventually. So if you're not watching live, you can watch uh, afterwards. But we're going to be talking a little bit. We say schedule reveal. We not kind of know going in because it's year two of contracts and stuff that what pe who people are playing. But we're going to talk about okay, it's a new team. It's uh you know we got to talk a little bit about what's going to be different this year. What you got to do to take overcome some of the L's you took last year. Make sure you maintain the W's that you get and and get a little bit different result this year. So a little bit of background uh, on Coach Williams fifth year going into the fifth year at Creekview 25 and 17 so far in his in his time there uh and have had some had some playoff runs in there but coach Williams if you wouldn't mind just kind of share people other than that a little bit of background about you and how you, your journey kind of led you to Creekview and what you guys have have kind of built so far in your tenure there yeah, so, uh, you know, graduated from Sequoia High School right down the road um, before Creekview was open. Uh, played a little bit of college football at Tusculum College up in Greenville, Tennessee. Uh, came home and uh, got a job out of college with Chris Bennett at Forsyth Central. Uh, was there for four years, then uh, moved on to South Forsyth, worked for Jeff Arnett over there uh, at South Forsyth, was there for six years. Um, and then was fortunate enough to get the job at Creekview with uh, Dr. Murgis and um, giving me that opportunity and, and was able to bring in uh, several staff members that are still there with us and, and kind of build and expand on that staff since we've been there and really excited to look forward to, to year five. Absolutely. So uh, you mentioned Sequoia there. We got a, it's, it's funny. It's a small world. You, you played for Sid Maxwell. I coached with Sid Maxwell uh, at Dawson. So I know, I know what your foundation is there. If you played for coach Maxwell, you played for a guy who's uh hard nosed and, uh, and, and a, and a player. He, when I was with him, he's a player's coach. Everybody, those kids loved uh, coach Maxwell. So I would imagine that that kind of trans translates into your program there at Creekview. Absolutely. Coach Max was one of the best to ever do it. Uh, you know, his record says enough about him, but, uh, you know, the, the experience we had at, at Sequoia and then what he's been able to do, uh, not only at Sequoia, but Lambert and now what he's doing at Dawson's just phenomenal. Um, just really excited for him and what he's built up there. And, and, uh, it, it definitely has set the foundation for what we do. And it's a huge part of why I coach. Uh, and then uh, a big part of what we do in our program here at Creekview. Probably has an influence on your uh, strength and conditioning too, because I'll tell you one thing, Coach Maxwell did some things that I had never even heard of before, like totally different approach to it. Is some of that patterned into it? And if it is, kind of tell some people, you know, without giving all your trade secrets away, some of the unique stuff in the weight room that maybe you, you got from that with the different certifications and stuff. I know you got a, got a bunch of those as well. Yeah, so uh, the, the biggest thing that, that we take from Coach Maxwell and what he was able to do, and he was doing this, you know, 25, 30 years ago, is, is kind of the speed and agility and, and uh, mobility stuff. Josh Pritchett, uh, our defensive backs coach, runs our, our speed work in the summer and in our offseason, uh, does an unbelievable job uh, with kind of building athleticism into, into our program, and uh, that's a huge part of it. And he was doing that way before it was cool, and before it was, uh, you know, kind of what everybody did. And I'm sure he's uh, continued to be on the cutting edge uh, now at Dawson. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, hey, yeah, I mean, it was, it was all kinds of different uh, from what I had experienced with just straight Olympic lifts and all that kind of stuff, a, a whole lot of different, a lot of focus on uh, movement, range of motion, mobility, all that kind of stuff. So very, very interesting there, but coach, 
we're going to talk here about this 2023 season that you guys have coming up last year uh, a little bit of a, a a dip down for you we went four and six after having a successful eight and three season uh the, the year before that but you've got a lot of young talent coming back before we get into the before we get into the schedule uh here just kind of just kind of talk about you know the the ebbs and flows of high school football we were talking about before you have some success and that kind of hurts you a little bit in scheduling the next year because you know people say oh that's a good team I don't know that we want to schedule them if we don't have to yeah no doubt you know it's a challenge but you know we kind of set out um after the the eight and three season in 2021 and uh we knew what kind of region we were getting into and and what the playoff run uh potentially could look like so you know we kind of wanted to set that up in the non-region schedule um, with some some playoff caliber teams and uh, we definitely uh, have a challenging non-region schedule and then it gets into our region schedule and you've got multiple teams that have won state titles within the last five six years uh, so it doesn't get any easier when you get into region play so you know it, it's a tough schedule but I feel like if if you can continue to get better week after week and uh, build on some success early in the season, then uh, your kids are definitely battle tested when you when when and if you get to a playoff run at the end of the year. Absolutely, and that playoff run starts uh, on August eighteenth uh, with a game, a non-region game, of course, against Cambridge over there, uh, Coach. This was a this was a game in which you guys uh, went down twenty twenty eight nothing last year, and then of course Hillgrove. Uh, 10-6, a close game. So those first two games started out not necessarily the way you wanted to this past year um, with such a young team. And, of course, like I said, there was a little bit of a uh, lack of offense in those first two games. But that you're looking to change that a little bit with uh, Austin Guest coming back at quarterback and then a really talented wide receiving core. Yeah, you know, um, we had lost, I think it was 95% of our production offensively uh, the year before. We had some bodies coming back. Uh, but when you graduate guys that are going to play at the Air Force and going to play college football at different places, you know, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get in there. And, and uh, you could definitely tell that, you know, Coach Bennett and Cambridge do a great job. And they had a lot of seniors on that team a year ago, and they took it to us early. Uh, you know, felt like we bounced back and played better against Hillgrove, uh, but still kind of had uh, some growing up to do. And, and after that second week, you could definitely tell our kids kind of settled in a little bit and, and going through that uh, growth process the first two weeks definitely allowed us to to grow and be ready to play a really tough Calhoun team in week three. Yeah, and that Cal Calhoun game was a kind of a barn burner. You guys were in in there, uh, twenty six twenty one. It was a real close close battle there. But all of these games, so you you like you said, young team coming back. Now you would have to think that experience, and, and in fact, those first two games were away. So you'll have on August eighteenth this year, and August twenty fifth, you'll have Cambridge and Hillgrove at home. You would have to think that that with Austin guest and and those receivers coming back and particularly a, a newcomer that that you have that you have coming in uh and i'll let you talk about talk about him in the class of 2026 um at the wide receiver position it should look to maybe have a little bit more explosivity on the offensive side of the ball absolutely you know anytime you bring your quarterback back uh you feel like you have a chance uh for us it starts up front we've got three seniors on the offensive line uh, coming back and Andrew Rosinski, our big left tackle, who's got six yeah. power five offers, Pearson Sears at center, um, Cam Mears at guard, and then some guys filling in. But that receiving core with Nathan Ajimang at uh, wide receiver class of 2026, he's 6'4", 205, expecting huge things from him. Uh, Lee Brock and Cal Schubert in the slot. And then Michael Roach, our tight end, will be a three-year starter. We're really looking forward to seeing him continue to grow into that role and make plays. Coach, you know, just talk to everybody, too, uh, offensively, um, you know, a little bit uh, philosophy-wise. You guys, I look, you know, I see when I watch film and things like that, I see some two-back sets. I see uh, an H-back used. I see some play action, a lot of shots. Austin Guest is not afraid to use his legs either. So just if you had to describe your offense philosophy like what you guys are and 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 how you guys uh what you can kind of 
you know, expect most of the time out of Creekview football. What what would you say about you guys offensively? Well, the, the buzzword now is multiple, right? Everybody's yeah. multiple, uh, multiple personnel, multiple formations. But for us, it starts with running the football. Um, we want to be physical in the run game, and that sets everything else up, play action, shot plays, quarterback runs. Um, I'm going to be a little more tempo this year uh, with a quarterback coming back, feel like you can do some different things and kind of let him run around a little bit and, and use his speed and um, really put the defense in a bind. Now, you, you, you mentioned running the football. Uh, Isaac Hubert was your leading rusher last year, senior. He's moved on 920 yards, uh, 12 touchdowns on the year. Um, any any candidates that are kind of emerging or that you're looking to emerge this spring as you guys head into spring ball to really uh, kind of get that run production going for you in 2023? Yeah, uh, Nigel Ajimang, Nathan's brother, is actually back at tailback. Um We've got several different guys vying for roles. Mason Munn was a freshman that got some carries for us last year. Uh, Grayson Davis is going to be a senior coming back off the injury. Um, really excited about the the running back room. And um, Tristan McWilliams is another young kid that had a great year on Thursdays for us that, that's exciting. Um, real tough runner, real physical runner. So uh, we've got four or five guys that that we feel like can step in and and be productive there. I don't know that we'll have one bell cow like we did with Isaac and, and with Tyler Stevens the year before, uh, but I feel like each one of those guys brings something different to the table and will give defenses uh, some different looks to prepare for. Absolutely, absolutely. So it was a year last year, uh, kind of of uh, streaks, Coach. You start off, you know, uh, three three tough ones in a row, and then – get on a little bit of a roll here uh, as you – as you last year you had North Forsyth and Alatoona at home and Etowah at home. You had three home games in a row. Now you're going to have three on the road this year. So you had some success last year, and North Forsyth ended up being a good football team facing Gainesville for a region championship uh, over in their, in their side of things. Um, but it's, it doesn't get any – doesn't get any easier, especially as you roll into into region play and all three of these games being on the road this year. But you do have to feel probably better with the experience you're bringing back with at the quarterback position. Um, but, you know, as we get into these teams, maybe talk a little bit about defensively, what's it going to take once you get into the, the middle of your schedule here? Yeah, I mean, when you talk Coach Kraft at North, Coach Varner at Altoona, and Coach Kemper at Etowah, you talk about three names in the state of Georgia that garner some attention and some respect. Um, you know, what Coach Kraft has been able to build at North Forsyth is just phenomenal. Um, you know, he's done a really good job. You know what you're getting there. They're going to throw it, uh, throw it around and, and be spread and multiple. Uh, and then you flip around the next week and go to Altoona, who lines up with a tight end, a fullback, and a tailback and gets in the eye and – and wants to pound the football, and then you flip you around and play that a while. They still exist. There's What's fullbacks. Are, you say fullbacks? They still exist. They're they're part of the game still. They exist down there at Altoona, and Coach Varner's got a bunch of good ones. Uh, they yeah. they they come to hit you in the face, and then uh, you know you go to Etowa the next week, and Coach Kemper's going to get in spread sets and empty formations, and and they've got a really good young quarterback that's going to run around and make some plays with his arms uh, and his legs. You know, like you said, there's no easy spot on the schedule. And, you know, the month of September, I don't think we play a home game. And uh, that'll be a test for our guys. But, you know, hopefully the the senior leadership that we have uh, will will show up and, and be able to, to weather that storm. Coach, you know, when you talk about the the fullback there, Nick Saban this year, uh, and when they played Tennessee, that Tennessee went all up tempo and all that kind of stuff. They got down at the goal line, they lined up in I formation. He said we had to call a timeout because our kids didn't they, they didn't even know what that was. They didn't, they hadn't even been able to uh, see that over there. So it, how much has from I guess your time when you, you first got into even in the last five years with the acceleration of of RPOs and and formation and everybody and and you know creating all this space out there how much has has things changed and how much have you had to adapt just in your five year period there here at Creekview yeah you know the the game goes in cycles you know it it really i guess the early 2000s the the spread scene started to come on a little bit you had a, a couple teams that would get in 10 personnel and throw it 
uh, by the late 2000s. Everybody was doing it, it seemed like. Um, you had a few teams still in the wing tee, still running option. Um, you know, now it's more multiple personnel. Everybody's in 11, 12. They're, they're starting to get the fullback, H-back type guys back in the box. Um, but the RPO game has, has completely changed how you have to defend uh, offenses because, you know, you can't cheat an extra guy in the box. Defensively, the, the answer always was, be plus one in the fit, you know, and, and if you do that now with the, with the quarterbacks, we see, you know, they'll just pick you apart. So those yeah. guys in the box have to, to hold up against the run. Uh, you know, I was listening to one of Kirby's clinics not long ago. And, and he said, you know, they still harp at Georgia about stopping the run, but for a very different reason, it's because the fewer guys you can stop the run with, the more you can allocate to defend the pass. You know, it yeah. used to be stuff everybody in the box down there and stop the run and make them throw it. Now you got to be able to stop the run with a few guys so that you can cover everybody that they're going to throw it to. Oh, yeah. They, they, Kirby, they were talking today on the, the preview, you know, one of the episodes released on ESPN Plus for the National Championship. They were talking about, the, you know, Kirby's mint front and being able to to reduce down to that four eye and have a basically a big refrigerator type body there in the middle to plug up the A gap and two gap it and all that kind of stuff. You don't necessarily get to go out and recruit and have that luxury at, at uh, you know, at Creekview and other high school uh, out there to be able to say, OK, we're going to go find this personnel. So how do you how do you kind kind of uh, adapt to that if you're if the goal is to have less bodies to be able to stop the run is it is it where you're just having to uh, scheme different technique or steam scheme up different uh, stunts and things like that to be able to mess with people's uh, run block schemes or, or how, what's the, kind of the ideal there well for us it's it's about being multiple first and foremost you know be able to bounce back and forth uh, and chip martin our defensive coordinator uh, and his staff on the defensive side do a tremendous job uh, they'll bounce back and forth between a 4-2 look, a 3-4. Uh, they'll get stacked a little bit. Um, you know, but for us, and this is something that I learned from Jeff Arnett years ago, uh, which is different than than what I grew up with under Coach Maxwell. Uh, you know, Coach Maxwell wanted to, to play a base formation, a base front, and, and know how to line up every time, whereas Coach Arnett was bring pressure. You know, yes. move move guys around, bring pressure, bring stunts be multiple on defense and, and force guys to make mistakes. And, and I feel like Coach Martin has kind of found the, the sweet spot in the best of both worlds. You know, he does a really good job of changing looks and uh, also bringing pressure when, when you need to, to to keep guys off balance. Because at the end of the day, defensively now in 2023, comes down to playing great third down defense, getting turnovers and getting stops in the red zone. Absolutely. So, uh, Coach, as we kind of make the turn around the halfway point of the season here, you'll have these last four games here on on the schedule. Last year, River Ridge and Sequoia were road games for you, and those were absolute heartbreakers because it it really, with those two, the results of those two games, you guys went from being maybe third in the region and being in the in the in the playoffs as a three seed to ending up being the five seed in the region, lost both those games by a combined seven points than River Ridge in overtime. Uh, River Ridge, a program that, that you know, has really kind of come out of obscurity to be a really good, a really good football team, uh, you know, lately. So, and all you guys right there on top of each other, Woodstock, Canton, all that kind of, all that kind of area over there. Um, talk about those two games and what, you know, getting those guys at home this year will be big, but what's, what's it going to take to be able to kind of flip the script on, on those two teams and one that's close to your heart there with the, the, the alma mater coming in to, to, to take, take them on in Sequoia. Yeah. Well, those two games told the tale of our season in, in 2022, you know, like you said, we were in a good position, uh, in the playoff run and the, the season had kind of followed the script of what we thought it was going to be. It was going to be really tough non-region uh, to prepare you and be battle-tested for the region. We were able to, to pick up a win against Altoona and Etowah, and then, uh, you know, some some plays went went their way, and we made some mistakes on special teams, and they both uh, played really, really well. And, you know, what Coach Collins has been able to do at River Ridge has, has been phenomenal. Um, really turned that place around. And then Coach Teeter's been at Sequoia 
uh, I think since Coach Maxwell left and, and yeah. has been able to to really be really solid and, and really good at Sequoia. So, you know, we'll have our hands full there. It's always nice to play in front of the home crowd when you can get them in the Grizzly Den and, uh, you know, the, the band is rocking and the cheerleaders are, are getting uh, their stuff done and our student section's phenomenal and uh, our, our booth crew, our game day operations crew with uh, Met Kagan on music and uh, Dr. Pruitt and her students on the video board uh, and what they're able to do for a game day atmosphere, uh, it's better than than a lot of college games you'll go to. And I think that's a huge advantage for us. So we're looking forward to, to getting those two games at home for sure. Our kids look forward to the county rivalry games. Um, you know, it, it's it's really important to them. And, and those two right there back-to-back -back weeks, uh, our kids will, will be emotionally drained at the end of those two weeks. And then, you know, you get a, a tough Woodstock team who brings a ton of guys back. Uh, they were super young last year. Uh, and then everybody knows uh, what Coach Reed and Rome uh, has uh, up there and what they've built with two back-to-back -back state titles a couple years ago and, and deep playoff runs seems about every year. So the back half of the schedule certainly doesn't get easier. Coach, that River Ridge and Sequoia game with how close those were last year, and you mentioned wanting to be able to run the football. Well, I imagine those other teams, that's a that's a priority for them as well. We talked about the, what you have in the trenches on the offensive side. I was hoping you would maybe uh, take, a, take a minute to, to – highlight you know defensively up front some of the guys that you're going to be looking to to really be stalwarts for you in your defense on in 2023 absolutely we've got two three-year starters coming back on the defensive line uh trey thomas and beckett singleton um both big big bodies in there beckett plays uh our shade and he'll bump over the four eye some you know he's 6'1 250 uh trey thomas 6'3 240 on defensive end uh, starts up front with those guys. And then Reed Anderson at Mike Linebacker will be another three-year starter, uh, four-year letterman for us uh, in, in the middle there. He was uh, all-region and all-state player for us this year. And then you go outside, Josh Tootin as our, our hybrid outside linebacker star position coming back. He led our team in sacks and tackles for loss in 2021. And then the secondary is going to be anchored down. Uh, we lose – two all-region players and two uh, one all-state player back there. Uh, but Lee Brock returns at free safety and Evan Whalen returns at corner for us. Both had tremendous years and uh, we will have some young guys that will have to step up and make plays. Uh, but those guys coming back and being two and three year starters for us uh, is going to be huge on that side of the ball. Coach, uh, with all the, the guys you said are returning, and of course, all the youth that you had getting that experience last year, and lo and losing four games by a total of fifteen points. What do you think that the that the the mindset of those guys after going through that experience and getting that that GHSA you know Friday night bright lights under their under their belt and being so close to really <laughs> to really being a two loss team uh, going into the the playoffs last year what how do you feel how have those guys responded from that and what's kind of the message to your team as you head into spring ball here well i hope they're angry um yeah. you know I, I, it feels like that you know we we've done our exit interviews and talked to a bunch of them and i think they realize how fragile winning can be when you play quality opponents like we like we did in 2021 yeah. Um, you know, when you talk four games by by 15 or 16 points, that's one or two plays in a game here or there that makes the difference. Yeah. You know, and, and you flip that around and uh, you had a close win against Altoona that's the same way. Um, yeah. It's a play here or there. So, you know, hopefully the focus in the offseason is doing everything you can uh, as a program, coaching staff, players, uh, to to make sure you're turning over every stone and, uh, making every workout, hitting every rep uh, with that in mind of of you don't know what rep is going to lead you to make or not make that play that's going to make the difference in in winning that big ball game or losing that big ball game. Absolutely. And we've, and we've, we've went through and covered the schedule here. Now I, I did this with Coach Ford, and I want this to kind of be a little bit of a staple here on the on the program. I'm going to go a little rapid fire here with you and ask you just some questions. Uh, but first, before we do the rapid fire, I do want to say, you know, Year five going into – you're going into year five at Creekview. 
that's not common these days. Guys bounce around a lot, you know, and, and things like that. But that must say a lot about the community and the support that you have there. And I know you mentioned some people to me uh, before. Um, just kind of talk about the, the support you guys have, whether it's, it's boosters, administration, and, and kind of what the community there at Creekview is like. Yeah, well, it starts with our administration. Uh, Principal Santoro and, and Mr. Bennett, our athletic director, just do an unbelievable job. And the rest of our admin team with making sure that, that you know, not only athletics is highlighted, but, but the arts and, and academics as well. You know, they, they want to be great in, in everything that, that Creekview does. And, and that expectation, you know, uh, permeates through that school and through that community. Uh, you know, it trickles down. And, uh, you know, our Booster Club president, Tim Lovato, does so much for our program behind the scenes that people don't ever see and the, the amount of hours he puts in. Uh, you know, I already mentioned our, our game day operations folks uh, that, that make that so special. But, you know, what what's, stands out to me, you know, when you talk about what makes high school football special in the state of Georgia is what happens in those stands on Friday nights. Um, you know, and our student section is, is phenomenal. And, and, you know, we host a a youth night, a CYFA night, Cherokee youth football, uh, every year. And, and man, it, it brings so much emotion and humility to, to come to see all the little kids from kindergarten all the way to, to eighth grade show up in their Creekview jerseys and cheerleading outfits and, uh, want to be Grizzlies when they grow up. I mean, that's a humbling experience and, and something I hope our players don't take for granted because I know uh, myself and our coaching staff certainly doesn't uh, with how special that is, that our, our, our fans are so great and that our stands are full every Friday night that we have a home game. Yeah, and I can speak uh, personally to the to the passion there, Coach, because the first year that Creekview was in existence it was the 2008 season, the, the first year they got going. And uh, two things come to mind when I think of Creekview. We were at FCA passing camp, mind you. Okay, this is FCA passing camp, and we end up getting with, in a little Donnybrook over there. You know, we, we're, we're uh, worshiping, praising Jesus, but then we're also getting in a little fisticuffs on the field over there with Creek, Creekview. So a little bit of fight, uh, fight in them when I was there. And then that first year, we were, you know, kind of a perennial playoff team, and this is a first-year program, and they come into North Hall and give us all that we wanted that year. It was 34-24, so since the inception of Creekview, it's been a uh, it's been a, a a program that you could see the see the fight in and and see everything everything uh, kind of build in that way. So I've always had a lot of respect, and obviously a lot of respect for what you're building now there with that with that program. But all right, are you ready for your uh, rapid fire here, Coach? A couple, as ready couple as I'll ever be. All right, so if it's a tense moment. In the game, tense moment, watching film. Who's the coach that's going to uh, make everybody crack up and give a little joke, uh, loosen everybody up a little bit on the staff? Bo Page, another Sid Maxwell disciple. Okay, what tell us about Bo Page a little bit? <laughs> coach Page and I actually played high school football together, and uh, you know he uh, always keeps it lighthearted and, and has a joke to tell. But he uh, he played for Sid, and then coached for him at Lambert and then followed Chris Parker to Pickens. And uh, he's our passing game coordinator, associate head coach, uh, and coaches our wide receivers and does just a phenomenal job. But if he's going to – if there's going to be somebody to break the ice, it's going to be him. All right. Uh, are you superstitious at all when you, you got a routine before games, anything that you have to do every time just so you don't feel right going out there on Friday night? Absolutely. What you got? What you got? What's the routine? You going to share it? <laughs> uh, there, there's some things I won't share, but the big one is uh, my wife and, and two boys sit up in the same place in the stands every Friday night and, and look up and wave at them, and then I can put the headset on and get ready to go. I'll tell you, uh, before every Friday night, I used to uh, – it wasn't good for the old uh, heart at all, but I used to – old school, but used to crack open an amp energy drink and just absolutely down it right before the – so I was more jacked up than the kids uh, going out there, I think, uh, before before we got going. Um, and then lastly, if – if big win, you come in, you want to uh, celebrate, you got to tell somebody to go out and, and uh, get some food so you and the coaches, what's the, what's the go-to – Post game meal that you want if you could if you could pick it to to eat after a nice win. 
Oh man, it's got to be uh, food from Las Palmas from down the road, the the local Mexican joint. Got to be chips and salsa and, and some fajitas and, and tacos. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, a little bit of a topical thing here. It just so happens that there's a small football game taking place tomorrow night. Uh, so I'd love as a as a coach uh, for you to give your analysis on what what everybody's going to see in the national championship game at the college level over there with Georgia and TCU. What do you what do you think is going to happen, Coach? Well, there's there's a reason they're they're coaching in the national championship game, and 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 I'm sitting here talking to you, but um, you know, I, I, Kirby's done such a great job building that place. And they're so physical on both sides of the ball, whether they're, you know, I don't care what the run pass percentage is. He wants to be physical. You know, they want to stop the run. And the thing that's interesting to me is just two different styles kind of going, going at it. You know, you've got more of a traditional pro style look in Georgia offensively and then defensively big bodies and super physical, multiple formations, multiple fronts. Uh, and then, you know, you flip over and TCU is air raid and 3-3 and you can get it done in, in any system. And, you know, to me, it's it's not necessarily the X's and O's. It's the old saying, it's the Jimmy's and Joe's and uh, and how you coach them up. And that's what I'm looking forward to is is that chess match and who can make the adjustments in the second half. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's going to be a fun one to watch. Now, Coach, tell everybody uh, where they can, you know, what they can expect from you guys this spring. Like, when are you, when are you getting rolling on uh, – you, you already got workouts going and all that kind of stuff, or when, uh, when, do you, when do you get everything rolling kind of towards the 2023 season here? Yeah, so we'll start tomorrow morning uh, in weight training first period with our older guys, and then our young guys uh, have second period. And we'll start bringing our rising ninth graders in in February. And – uh, we'll really start uh, spring practice, I guess, officially the first week of May. And then uh, just actually scheduled our spring game against Kennesaw Mountain uh, May the 18th at their place. So uh, we'll we'll start doing that and get two and a half weeks of spring practice and get down there and play a really quality opponent in the spring. Absolutely. And that's a great thing. Uh, Kirby Smart even said in his, in his press conference uh, today, he was like, hey, uh, programs that get states that have spring football – their players end up being a year ahead when they come out of versus the states that don't. So fortunate here in the state of Georgia uh, that we do get to have that. And uh, coach, we're looking forward to keeping up with all that. I appreciate you taking the time to come on with me here on Peach State Pigskin. For those that don't know, this is a new venture trying to just highlight what is good about Georgia high school football and appreciate guys like John Ford first episode and coach Williams uh, coming on here with me for this episode uh coach just appreciate it so much and we hope to have you on you know maybe uh going into spring or post spring and then of course in the season as well blaine absolutely man anytime i can can come on and highlight our kids and, and our community at creekview uh is a win and and i'll absolutely uh accept any invitation to come on this this uh podcast and this show and uh talk about it yeah, well, guys, we're going to uh, look to maybe have some Friday night content uh, going on this 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 fall as well. So make sure you're subscribed to this channel, Takeover Sports Network. It's been all college up until now, but I said, hey, we got to throw some GHSA uh, content on here. So Peach State Pigskin, you can see on, on Twitter at Peach State underscore HSFB. So make sure to hit subscribe. It's free. Turn on notifications, like all that good stuff. And for Trevor Williams, I am Blaine Gilmer. And guys, we will catch you next time on Peach State Pigskin.